from the global significance of the times we are in from an, from an astrological point of view. Hi, Helen, are you there with me? I am, Shelley. Hi there. Hi there. Thanks for joining me this evening. I'm really delighted to have you on the show, and I know it's going to be, um, we're going to have a really interesting um, conversation tonight, because yeah, there's, there's lots yeah. to talk about, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you how I sort of came across your work, because I always like to find interesting people who I know I like to, to listen to and, and hear talk or read their books. And um, I came across you when I saw your lecture that you gave at the Alternative um, View Conference in 2009. And I thought to myself, yeah, this is somebody who gets it and has, you know, has something original to offer as well. Because I find with the whole 2012 subject, um, there's a lot of people duplicating other people's work and they're not really offering anything original so it's very refreshing when we find people who are able to sort of offer some some new insights and and that's what I find about your work so um so let's start and uh and just tell me how you how you personally got interested into this whole area of the astrology of 2012 because obviously it's slightly different from what you do with your own practice um you do one-on-one -on -one consultations um you know so so how did you get started with this type of astrology okay well about um oh it must be about six years ago now um a friend jeff stray uh wrote a book um called uh 2012 uh ecstasy or uh, catastrophe mm -hmm. beyond 2012 it's called and he said to me would I look at the chart for 2012 and uh, this whole area of astrology it's called mundane astrology it's like a sort of sub branch of astrology and it's about looking at events or the charts of countries or or um, you know things rather than just people Yes, because that's what people don't understand, is that um, countries have their own charts as well. Yes, they do. Uh, yeah. yes, they and their do. own personalities, and uh, it's very interesting. Yes, yes. And um, so this, this is something that I hadn't really looked at um, in depth before, but I thought uh, because he'd asked me and he wanted us to include it in his book, I had a look. And um, the first thing that really excited about, uh, me about it was um, the time of the winter solstice that year, because uh, back in sort of the mid-90s, about 1995, a friend of mine had said to me, oh, have you ever noticed when you look at a digital readout how it often shows 11-11? Oh, yes, the 11-11 phenomenon. Um, mm -hmm. No, I haven't noticed that before. And from that moment on, so that was from the mid-90s, um, I started to notice it. Yes. And I looked it up on the internet, and um, uh, it seems that it was a movement begun by Solera, yes. who was a visionary, and she speaks about um, uh, these doorways opening. And um, when each doorway opens, I think the first one opened in 1992, and the last one will open uh, in November 2012. Um, and each time, there's hopefully a sort of a more enlightenment and a shift in consciousness. And so I started to get interested in, in all that. But this was way before I even looked at the astrology. And then, of course, I couldn't believe it when I saw the time of the winter solstice being at uh, exactly 11.11, because that's, uh, you know, uh, an ast astronomical thing, not just uh, an astrological one. And it's, um, it's interesting how the time is at 11.11, .11 because I've come across that before as well, and, you know, the synchronicity is, is, um, is quite outstanding, you know, yes. you know, to be honest. Yes. You know. I, I found it absolutely incredible. Honest. And and it's funny, like what you were saying, you know, seeing the eleven eleven, you know, I myself, I've 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 gone through that as well. Um, at first, I wasn't seeing those numbers, and then all of a sudden, I was seeing eleven eleven everywhere. Yes. And that's what made me look into, um, you know, this phenomena of seeing these numbers. And there are there are other numbers as well, but this yes. one in particular has a very powerful energy because obviously eleven is a master number. Yes. Um, and um, I myself also uh, came across Solera's work and realized, oh, you know, I'm not crazy here. There is something much bigger going on. Um, yeah, so, which you're tuning into, really, yes, aren't you? Yes, yes. 
Well, um, uh -huh. I then looked at the chart for England, and I use um, the crowning of William the Conqueror on Christmas Day, 1066. And the reason I use this particular date is because uh, for a start, it's completely in our national psyche. Everybody's sort of heard of 1066. Yes, yeah. Um, some astrologers I know do use, use the, um, the chart, the Unification 1801 chart. But interestingly enough, the sun is almost exactly at the same position in the chart. So we are definitely a Capricorn country. And if you look at the personality of the British yes. or, or the English, um, we well, we encapsulate so much of the Capricornian energy. You know, we tend to be sort of fairly conservative. Yes. We like to be seen to be doing the right thing. The step up a lip. The step up a lip. <laughs> yeah. uh, slightly melancholic. Mm -hmm. We like to, you know, grumble and moan and, uh, you know, moan about the weather every day, even though yeah. we've learned by now. Um, but we have a dry, ironic sense of humour. You know, somebody like John Cleese, I think, sort of typifies... Yes, definitely, yeah. a, 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 you know, sort of typical British person. But mm -hmm. it also typifies the sign of Capricorn. And uh, Capricorn is, is all about, um, as well, taking on responsibility and viewing the world quite cynically. Um, and not many people can pull the wool over our eyes interestingly enough and I think it's the more I looked into it actually the more I began to realize that England is is a very special place and um, for a start it has the most unique geology in the world in this one tiny place in a much more variation than say the big continents like America or, or, mm -hmm. or um, Russia or somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. we, and I think what comes with different rock types are, are different Earth energies. Yes. Which I think, again, have a bearing on our consciousness and help shape our consciousness. And, it, and we always have been a kind of bridge between the Americas and the Europeans. And it's... Um, yeah, I, and then I began to think maybe, maybe in 2012 we'll have a special role to play. Yes. And also at that time, um, it was, you know, the Olympic bids were going out mm -hmm. and France were favourites. But then I looked at the chart for England and the transits during 2012 and I looked at it and I thought, wow, yeah, we are definitely going to win the bid for the Olympics. Because Pluto, the dark lord of the underworld, he's the planet to do with power and control. And we ha when we have Pluto either uh, passing over one of our personal planets, or sun and moon, um, a deep transformation goes on with the individual or the country, or uh, whatever chart we're dealing with. And Pluto is exactly on England's sun, and the point in the chart to do with our public standing in the world. Um, interestingly enough, when um, Margaret Thatcher, when Pluto went over her son, that's when she came to power. Right, because yes, Pluto is a, is a power planet, it and um, yes. So in in the in the chart for England, um, in on the midheaven, that's where the sun, that's where the Capricorn sun is. Is that is that correct? That's correct. Right. And, okay. And when if, that, if this was a person, uh, because that point in the chart is to do with your public standing, um, so you were born with the sun at, mid, uh, at the mid-heaven, the highest point in the, in the sky, so it's, you know, midday, mm -hmm. um, you usually tend to be quite prominent in your career because that's the point in, in the chart to do with your, your career, mm -hmm. usually. Mm -hmm. It's what you've become, basically. Um, so here we have Pluto, the planet of transformation, going over our sun. Now, Capricorn is also the sign to do with the establishment, it's to do with government. And when Pluto goes through a particular sign, it's almost like all the shitty stuff that needs to be <laughs> transformed comes um, forward, into something yeah. positive mm -hmm. comes up to be dealt with. And it moved into Capricorn in 2008. So 
So first of all, it's like all the dodgy dealings of the banks, anything to yeah. do with institutions. Um, that was the first to, to sort of be um, revealed, if you like, yes. or, or, you know, it needs transformation badly. But the thing is, it's like you can't get the transformation without it being exposed. And they, Yes, and they have been trying to have it be covered up but but as much as they try more and more is coming to the surface exactly and um, and it's very interesting as what you're saying because um yes pluto went into went pluto went into um capricorn in 2008 and literally within a few months um we had the whole um you know the banking crises uh that gave us that big collapse in 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 uh, around september time 2008 um so, I mean, it didn't waste any time, did it? <laughs> no, in fact, it, it, was, it was almost shocking. Yeah, um, yeah. In, uh, the, the speed in which, and this is what, what I think, everything is sort of moving much faster now. We're really, really, um, you know, having to face things that, that have been, um, in the past, I think it took a long time, and there was a lot of sleepiness, a lot of apathy about dealing with things, but now there's an urgency, which I think is, is brought about by the um, configurations that are going on in the sky at the moment. Mm -hmm. And when you have, say, full moons or, or new moons or eclipses and things like that, or um, say Mars, for instance, last week, um, Mars came into a very, very dynamic um, aspect with um, Pluto and Uranus. Um, Uranus is the planet to do with revolution. It's to do with overthrowing the old if it's not working. Uranus is the awakener. And um, it, everything with Uranus happens quite suddenly and quite shockingly. And combined with that sort of primal, raw, libidinal energy of Pluto, um, it was we we witnessed it with the riots yes and what I was saying as well um, at the beginning of the show when I first did the introduction, we were having our riots here and there was a lot of, of other things going on worldwide. Um, yeah. You know, there were movements going on in India. They're having protests over there. Yeah. Um, there were the riots going on in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, there were the riots going on, I believe it was Chile, with the, with the students uprising against the government because of, once again, high tuition fees. Um, there was a lot of there was a lot going on la last week. Yes, and and you could feel it. I mean, you know, yes. I I talk to people about feeling energy, and some people look at me like I've lost my mind. But you can literally, you could feel um, something was afoot last week, and yes. it was, and it built, didn't it? It was. Yes, it did. It did as as the the full moon came on. Yes, uh, and as as uh, Mars um, came into an exact opposition with Pluto. It was uh, very, very powerful. What and day did it make the exact? Um, um, on the tenth. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That 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 was the exact, and um, it's almost like p people who who are maybe very, very conscious might be aware of that kind of restlessness. It's like it's like something has to break, you know, and it, it, it's the, the tension that builds up. And some people manage to use that energy very creatively, but if you um, if you if you look at the circumstances of a lot of the rioters, they've had a build up over many years, and it's almost like, wow, you know, that nothing can hold back the tide. And unfortunately, I don't think this is kind of the end of it now, because I think that we'll see an awful lot more of this. Yes. Especially as the um, the square aspect, which is very, very dynamic between Uranus and Pluto, builds and builds to become exact next year. Yes, and I'd like to get on to that, but before, um, because that's that in itself is, is very amazing, and I love what you've written about, you know, the correlations back in the 60s to where we are now. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a transit that's, um, that's being continued, but in a different, slightly in a different way. But before we just go on to that, I just wanted to pick up on um, um, the other aspects of the, the chart for England, because y you also say 